Hi, and welcome again to TSAM Digital. I'm Anam Khan. I'm the head of content here at Fox on Media. And joined by me today, I have Naj Alwi and Mark Woodgate from Cinemorph. Hello, both. It's a pleasure to have you here. And to kick things off, Naj, can I get a brief introduction about yourself? And if you could let our audience know a little bit about Xenomorph, that would be absolutely brilliant. Thank you, Anam, for uh, inviting us to uh, TSAM Digital. My name is Naj Alwi. I'm the uh, president of Xenomorph Americas, and uh, Xenomorph is uh, in the business of providing analytics and data management to uh, the capital markets. Hello, my name is Mark Woodgate. I'm one of the original uh, founders of Xenomorph. For the first 10 years, I worked in the product development of uh, Xenomorph, and then 10 years ago, I moved to New York City to help grow the uh, business here. Brilliant. Thank you very much both for, for the introductions. Um, to kick things off, um, this year has been really strange for all of us, and especially for SA management, uh, it has impacted it in many different ways. How do you think uh, the pandemic has impacted data management operations for investment managers? I think from what we've seen in, in terms of the, the, the actual data being managed, I don't think we've seen uh, any significant changes. In terms of from a technology perspective, I think we've seen a little bit. Mm -hmm. And how do you think Xenomorph has adapted to these changes? I think as a, I think as a product company, it uh, hasn't affected us too much. We have a lot of people who, developers work from home anyway. So from them, uh, life hasn't changed actually that much. So, I mean, I, I'll add to that. Uh, some of the things that we have been doing uh, in terms of from a social perspective is we're trying to keep our um, uh, staff engaged with one another by by sharing uh, what everyone's doing on a weekly basis, on a daily basis. We have the um, some of the things that you may have come across and uh, in terms of some of the lockdown tales that we've been writing in terms of how we've been coping ourselves and sharing that with our, with our clients as well. And uh, from a productivity point of view, we haven't really had any issues um, even prior to um, COVID hitting. As Mark was mentioning, a lot of the uh, staff, you know, they, 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 they work in the office, they sometimes choose to work from home. Uh, we actually had all of the infrastructure in place prior to COVID actually taking place so that we can continue operating. And obviously we, you know, we provide 24, five, 24, seven support to our clients. Um, so, so COVID really hasn't affected our operations, thankfully. Brilliant. And what trends are you seeing as a result? Have you seen a shift in how data management is handled? I think what's interesting, actually, is that's very similar to how our product has evolved. So we originally started as a desktop product. So everybody had a local instance of the software. Everyone was kind of siloed. And then over time, we became a kind of centralized platform. And more recently, we've seen the technology kind of move into the cloud, becoming a managed service. And in fact, we recently won an award for an innovative solution along with Microsoft uh, and Mizuho for having a, a cloud-based solution. So in addition to what Mark just mentioned, um, some of the things that we've actually seen recently um, in terms of trends with um, client demands and, and firm demands have been around the focus on, uh, on product. Um, the issue that uh, a lot of the uh, firms are trying to address right now is uh, is trying to have something out of the box, something that is uh, ready and uh, can be extensible uh, to what they need. Some of the things that they're trying to do around that is, is, is cost control and obviously not wanting to have a lot of customization and uh, stealth consultancy because our focus for the last two decades really has been out of the box uh, product delivery. Um, the wins that we've had recently, they really have been around um, around our, our strength of our product. Um, the other thing that we've actually seen around some of the trends is the, uh, the clients valuing our, uh, our, our interaction in terms of our support, in terms of us delivering uh, above and beyond just the product in terms of building that relationship and understanding what the clients are actually really needing from day one all the way through you know, year on year in terms of how, how we deliver our uh, pro product roadmap. Those are the sort of things that we've actually been seeing. And also from a self-service point of view, clients being able to extend the product themselves. Those are the trends we've been seeing in the sense that we, we as in clients, we want to be able to own the product and move things forward and not be worried about when we release new versions of the product from a uh, backward compatibility point of view. So those are the key sort of um, uh, trends we've been seeing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And client experience seems to be a very important part of Xenomorph. Um, you mentioned the what if question in your presentation. Uh, for the TSAM Tech Show. How do you apply this in your daily interactions? 
Um, do you want to start? Yeah, I think uh, I think it's an argument for what meant said before. It's all about uh, working with our clients to to find solutions. One example is uh, producing something around commercial data management. So a lot of our clients uh, get data from vendors from different departments. They may get charged multiple times. So part of it is making sure that they only they only pay for what they actually get uh, and minimize that, and also make sure that they don't pay for what they don't use. So commercial data management is a, is a very big thing about how you can actually reduce your data vendor costs. And for our larger clients, uh, that could be very, very significant. I think also what we've seen uh, is the variation of the data that clients are, are asking us to store. So now with, uh, with different trading strategies, some, some people are actually looking at very specialized industry data. So it may be technology data, it may be energy data. And what we're finding is, is, is some of the traditional players in the enterprise data management space are so used to the kind of security master model, they're not well suited to actually ingesting completely different types of data. And that's one thing that we do very well. We have a flexible data model that allows our clients to do just that. Also, I think uh, from, a, from, a, um, from a client perspective, everything that everything Xanimorph does uh, is all about clients. Our product, our staff, we are all geared towards delivering what our clients and what the market needs. Um, what's the point of actually building a product that no one needs, no one enjoys? Uh, what's the point of actually delivering a service that no one values? Everything that we do, everything that we believe and everything we, we think uh, for the last two decades and, and, and going forward, it's what do we need to do to satisfy our clients? What do we need to do to make sure they leave on time? What do we need to do that they actually enjoy coming into the work the next day with smiles on their faces? You know, that everything that we do is, is client focused, whether that's something that I'm thinking of in terms of how, how we're going to make the product better, whether that's something that Mark is thinking of how we're going to support our clients better or develop something. Everything is client focused. If you get that right, everything else comes forward. Brilliant. Moving away from uh, client focus to regulatory focus, um, regulators are gripping the industry very tightly and coming up with a lot of regulations. How have you responded to the effect of these increased regulatory requirements? I think, I think we've all seen that when we, when we had the crash in 2009, when it was, I think a lot of people realized was the data was very loosely managed. So a lot of people were changing things. No one knew what was being changed, who changed it, when and why. The data wasn't being validated. People were not able to ad adequately calculate risk. So I think the important thing with the introduction of things like FRTB is the ability to store vast amounts of complicated data if you're working with internal models, it's very, very important to calibrate those models, make sure that the calculations they produce are in line with observed kind of market quotes to make sure that those models are actually fit for purpose. I think also how the data moves through the system, make sure that it has four eyes validation and it's been checked by two people so that your gold copy data is actually uh, fit for purpose. And of course, you need all the data around that to report on that auditing lineage uh, and all those things to make sure that everyone knows precisely how that data has moved through the workflow. Absolutely. I think also um, the fact that we subscribe to uh, uh, continuous improvement, you know, we're, we're always looking to address uh, our, our product so that it's always in line with what a, uh, a client or set of our clients need. And also from a, from a market point of view, you know, regulations, uh, we've, we've been working with our clients around uh, FRTB, we've been working with our clients around uh, um, IPV, also with uh, MCC, and, and, and the way that the product is architected, it, it's, a, uh, it's a framework that allows you to very easily uh, manage any regulation that's coming along, um, and, 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 and that's all part of our continuous improvement in terms of the product, in terms of the company, all focus, again, all focus around the client, all focus around the product. Yeah, I think, I think one, one final point is, is we, we always make sure that our, our software is fully backwardly compatible. So each time we release a new version of the software, it's not a headache for our clients in that everything that they've built with our software themselves, we guarantee that carries on working, which is very important to them. We're approaching close to the end of this discussion. My last question to you is, how are technology and data management trends changing for 2021? I think, uh, I think uh, as I said earlier, we, we, are, we are seeing a, a change from on-premise solutions to, to cloud-based solutions. So part of that is the, is the management of, uh, of the data itself. But I think also to a lot of firms who are trying to reduce uh, their IT costs, 
we're also seeing an increase in kind of managed services and software as a service so that their IT staff can actually work on more strategic things rather than kind of supporting uh, an IT infrastructure on premise. So in addition to what Mark just uh, mentioned, one of the things that we have been seeing is the move from, uh, or not so much the move from, but certainly the, the, the thought process now from a number of our clients whereby they're looking at uh, public clouds as well as private clouds. Uh, and we're working with uh, a few of our um, uh, firms that we are looking to actually provide a platform as a service for them. Um, so an extension of the, of the private uh, service that we've been providing. Um, so the great thing about the, the product and the way that it's been architected is that it's not just specifically built or designed for one particular type of cloud. So obviously with, with Mizuho and, and Microsoft, we, we, as Mark mentioned, we won the most innovative uh, EDM um, uh, platform uh, in, in the cloud. Uh, and that was with Azure. But now you know, we're, we're proving ourselves out with, um, with AWS. Uh, we, we know that we work in other cloud environments as well. So our clients have the pick of the, um, um, uh, their, their preferred cloud environment. And uh, we are also providing or looking to provide a, uh, a, a full-on managed service uh, around uh, platforms of service, maybe software as a service in terms of how, whichever way the client uh, would like us to do that. But those are sort of trends that we are seeing in terms of how clients are moving from just being on site to being in the cloud, a private cloud, to being potentially in a public cloud, uh, but obviously with um, all of the security protocols in place. Uh, so that, that's something that we are working with them on. And uh, it's, a, it's a huge thing that's uh, uh, you know, going to be doing and delivering for them. It's, it's fantastic. The other side of things that we are looking at uh, and helping them, uh, our, our clients with is, um, is just basically continued improvement you know, in terms of how we can help them with uh, cost controls, how we can help them with risk management. Um, and I think maybe one of the things that maybe Mark can talk about is some, some of the things that we've been doing with uh, removing inherent operational risks. So as part of this uh, working from home um, uh, scenario, some of the things that we've done in the past are, are around um, this uh, spreadsheet proliferation has really come home to, um, uh, to, to to bear as it were, in the sense that we've, we've removed all of the um, um, uh, operational risk that potentially is associated with um, uh, data being on people's desktops, being in, in the spreadsheets, uh, and we've centralized that within, uh, within, the, uh, within the platform itself. And we have a specific, a specific data type called the, um, the formula group spreadsheet in the site, which allows, the, allows that operational risk to be um, uh, uh, mitigated and centralized. Can we just explain a little bit more on that, Mark? I think you've done most of it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so yes, I mean, obviously, um, we, we still see, even now, we see what we still see a lot, particularly the larger clients, they still manage all their risk out of spreadsheets because it's the only uh, mechanism flexible enough to deal with what they do. And as we alluded to earlier, with um, with the regulatory pressure, um, you don't want to do that. But if you can if you can offer the flexibility that that, it, that a spreadsheet offers, but do it in a centralised, robust, and controlled fashion, that obviously is um, very desirable. But there's one other thing I'd like to say around the kind of managed services uh, that Naj alluded to. One other thing which we do try to do with all our clients is whilst that uh, improves certain uh, technology things, we still, where possible, give them as much control over the system. So as, as they move into new asset classes, as they move into new data sets, they still control the changes to the system themselves. Um, so that's very important. Although, although you're reducing their IT costs, you're still giving them the flexibility from a business perspective to actually make those changes they need in the future themselves and not rely on Xenomorph. Absolutely. Brilliant. Thank you very much, both Mark and Naj, for joining us today. Hopefully our audience have enjoyed this discussion and they could join us again at the tech show to hear more about this. Thank Absolutely. you very much. Thank you, Adam. And we Thank appreciate you. the opportunity to actually share uh, with TSAM, with the TSAM audience, who Xenomorph is, uh, what we do and what we value and what we bring to our, uh, our, our clients. And I hope uh, we, we get to meet with uh, some interesting people at the, uh, the TSAM Digital Conference. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you.